What we're showing our people is that American black is not a nationality. It's a color in a crayon box, right? You got a young king right there with you. All of you brothers are supposed to be gods on this earth, meaning rulers on this earth here. But the first step is knowing who you are, coming back to your rightful heritage and nationality. That's what we're teaching today. identify themselves as African-American and as black. And um, a few years back, it was Negro. Years before that, it was colored, right? Afro-American, we were named after the hair sucker. I say it one and three real quick. Isaiah chapter one, verse three. Listen up, y'all. The ox knoweth his owner. The Most High God is saying that the ox, the ox is, a, is an animal, right? It's a dumb animal. He says the ox know who his owner is, right? Read. And the ass his master's crib. He says the donkey. A jackass knows where his homeland is, his master's crib is. Read. But Israel. But who? But Israel. It says, but the Israelites does not what? Doth not know. Our people don't know, and what else? My people doth not consider. Our people even don't even care that they're calling themselves African American. They name themselves after a color. They don't care that there's nothing but confusion. Get that in Daniel 9, confusion the face. Right? So what we're out here to do now is show our people the truth, who you really are, so that you can start coming back to your God, coming back to your true heritage, your true nationality, so that what? You can eventually now take your rightful place on this earth here. What do you think you were created to do? Why were you placed on this earth, black man? I was created to be prosperous. Prosperous? What about you, sis? Jesus came to serve, so I'm here to serve. You came to serve who, though? You came to serve Jesus, but did you come here to serve these other nations? Were you created to serve these other nations? No. So why are we serving these other nations now? How you doing, sis? What's your name, sis? Shirley. 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 How you doing, Shirley? A lot of what we do is our people. See, lack of knowledge, people perish. Right, and that's the thing. If you don't know something, you're ignorant. Our people perish for lack of knowledge. What you think about that is, when you don't want to be enlightened, you can't give it to them. Exactly. Christ says, my sheep hear my voice. Read that. Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. Bring it up. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So God says that his people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. A lack of knowledge. Read. Because thou hast rejected my rejected knowledge. Because we rejected knowledge, the knowledge of God, what happens? I will also reject thee. Read. That thou shalt be no priest to me. So the reason why we are actually, we were created to serve God. We were not created to, to serve on these slave ships here or to serve any other nation. The Most High God created the so-called Black, Hispanics, and Native Americans specifically to be his chosen people and to govern this earth. Get that in Leviticus 25. The last verse. And that's what we have to, we're coming out here to give the knowledge to our people so that we can start doing the things that are necessary in order for us to take this planet back the way we were rightfully ordained to. But what this said is heavy. We were created to serve God, not man. Read that. 
Leviticus chapter 25, verse 55. Go ahead. For unto me, the children of Israel are servants. It says unto the Most High God, the children of Israel are servants. Read. They are my servants. They are my servants. Read. Whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. Who he brought forth out of the land of Egypt. So them people that the Most High God brought forth out of Egypt, they are the children of Israel, and they are the ones ordained to be his servants. But what happened to us then? Why have we fallen? Is the question. Get through Deuteronomy 28. We made a covenant with the Most High God. We told the Most High God, whatever you command us to do, we will do it. We said, Most High, if you, if you set us on high above all nations, we will, we will keep your laws. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But Moses in the wilderness told him this, though. Read. But it shall come to pass. Uh-huh. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If we don't listen to the voice of the Most High God, though, read. To observe to do all his commandments. To observe to do his commandments. The Bible said our people perish or are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, right? What is that knowledge that we fell from? Get the knowledge. What, what is the knowledge that we that we are destroyed from now? What is that? To serve him and be prosperous on this land. How do we serve God, though? With all our heart, all our mind, yeah. In spirit and in truth, right? Let's see what the knowledge is. Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. Go ahead. Where the priest's lips should keep knowledge. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. The priest's lips, the teachers of the Most High's word, should keep the knowledge, right? Read. And they should seek the law. The what? The law. The what? The law. At his mouth. They should seek the laws of God out of that priest's mouth. So what is that knowledge? Okay, what is the law though? We're going to get it to you. But what is that knowledge? The knowledge that the people serve him. Then what is that? Read it again. Read it again. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So it said the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Read. And they should seek the law at his mouth. So what is that knowledge that our people lack? That we're supposed to be getting from the priest? What is that? Read it again. Read it again. For the priest's lips. Should keep knowledge. Should keep knowledge. Read. And they should seek the law. Seek the law. The law. Read. At his mouth. At the priest's mouth. So what is that knowledge that our people are destroyed from? Knowledge of God. Read it again. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. It said the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So right, he's going to tell you what the knowledge is. Read. And they should seek the law. They should seek the law. At his mouth. At the priest's mouth. What is the law? What right. Is what you mean? What the laws? The laws of God. The laws of God. Okay. Right? So that's why people are destroyed because we went away from God's laws. Get that in Deuteronomy 28, 15. Now watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Go ahead. But it from? shall come to pass, uh -huh. if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To do what? To observe, to do all his commandments. All of his commandments, read. And his statutes. And his statutes. Which I command thee this day. And he commands thee this day. So if we go away from God's laws, statutes, and commandments, what's going to happen? Read. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, you mentioned that we're serving other people. We're only created to serve God. We read that in Leviticus 25, right? right. Let me show you what the curses get for 43. Go ahead. I live out of Old Testament and New Testament. Uh -huh. You read not the, the Old Testament. Yeah. But Jesus came in New Testament that, that he didn't come to the front of the Old Testament. Ah, so and, let's get that. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Let's, no, 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 no. let's, get, let's, let's, get, let's okay. get the New Testament no. for you. No, and did he say the greatest commandment? Ah. What is the greatest commandment? What is that? No, love the Lord thy God okay. and love thy neighbor as okay. thyself. So let's explain that. Let's explain that. No, 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 let me explain it. No, no. Let's explain it with the Bible. Can you let the Bible speak? This is our setting okay. to teach our people. I, I understand. Right? Okay. I understand. Go ahead. God called me to serve. God called me to teach his people. Uh, no, no, no. So this is this is our platform okay. now. Yeah, right? So okay. our, our job is to actually teach the people. What I'm Your job is, is to learn. Okay. Because right. we're dealing with the Bible, right? Okay. Go ahead. Go so get Matthew 5. No, we're not, we're not, we're not leaving. We're going to get the scripture so we can give our people the right information, right? Because did Christ destroy the law saying you no longer have to keep God's laws? He didn't say it. He said he didn't did, did come to the start of the law. Okay, he now read that. Law, Matthew, so, chapter... So what law did he fulfill? Did he fulfill the law of murder to the point where we have, we can murder now? No, did he fulfill no, the law of rape so now no, our men can go out and no, rape women? No, 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 no. Did he fulfill the law of stealing so now we can steal? No, no. So what law did Christ fulfill? 
Exactly. Let's read now. Read. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Go ahead. Think not that I have come to destroy the law. That's the problem. Our people think that Christ came to do away with the Old Testament laws that Moses said that we went away from. He said, read it again. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I have come to destroy the law. But Christ said, don't even think that I come to destroy the laws of the Bible. Read. Or the prophets. Or the, or the words written in the prophets. With What testament do we find the prophets at? We find it in the Old Testament. That's all Christ taught. That's all the disciples taught. So Christ didn't come to destroy the Old Testament. But when we come out and read the Old Testament, we get people to say, well, you see, you're reading from that Old Testament. Christ said, I didn't come to destroy that. So read it again. Think not that I have come to destroy the law. So don't think that Christ came so now we don't have to read the Old Testament or do what's written in the Old Testament. Read. Or the prophets. Or the prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah, King David was a prophet. He wrote the book of a lot of Psalms, Proverbs, all that. Read. I am not come to destroy, uh -huh. but to fulfill. Ah, that fulfill. What did Christ fulfill now? Get that in Luke 24. And you got you got a precept in your Bible? Uh, yes, sir. So what did Christ fulfill? Read that. Let's see what Christ came to. Did he come to fulfill the laws of God? Meaning we can now murder, steal, we can eat whatever we want to eat? Or did he come to fulfill this here? Read. Luke chapter 24. 24 verse 44 Go ahead. and he said unto them these are the words which i spake unto you he said these are the words which i spake unto you read while i was yet with you while i was yet with you that's christ speaking to his disciples and all of his followers read that all things must be fulfilled uh -huh. which were written in the law of moses which were written so all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of moses read and in the prophets and in the prophets read and in the psalms and in the psalms Con read concerning me concerning jesus christ so what things were written about Christ and the prophets? Get Isaiah 53 real quick. 53 verse 10. This is what Christ came to fulfill that were written in the prophets, right? Isaiah 53 verse 10. You, you, you I, see what, what, what's going on here? Read. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 10. Go ahead. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. Bruise who? Christ, Most High sent his son Christ down to do what? To die for the sins of his people. Right. Right, so it said it pleased the Lord to bruise him, read. He has put him to grief. He has put him to grief. Christ was put to grief. Christ didn't commit no sin, though. But Christ was put to grief, read. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. When thou shalt make his soul a what? An offering for sin. What do we know Christ as? The ultimate sacrifice, right? When thou shalt make his soul a what? An offering for sin. An offering for sin. Right. So we come in as drug dealers. We come in as whoremongers. We come in as adulterers. We come in as drug addicts. Christ says, come on in. But watch what he says. Read. John chapter 3, verse 3. Go ahead. Get up. Jesus answered and said unto him, Go ahead. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, uh -huh. Except a man be born again. Except a man be born again, no. Read. He cannot see the kingdom of God. He's not going to see the kingdom of God. So what does it mean born again? It means to become a new person after you come in as that person that, that's breaking God's laws. Now let's get God's dress code, Numbers chapter 15. What do you want to talk to you today, Levi? I go. No, come on, come on, Levi. Come on now. You, so, you, we gave you your script so, and we gonna, explained it, right? So I'm now gonna, let's, deal with this, gonna, let's deal with this one law, so, Levi. So, she should be in the past? Huh? She should be in the past? Don't what does the way. Bible say? Get Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. What do you think? So you want to be in the past? No. Then neither do my three daughters. Neither is this brother's wife or his daughters. Right. Or this brother's wife or his daughters. Right. Or this brother's wife or his daughters. Or that brother's wife and his children. Why? Because God commanded them not to. Get that Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. How you doing, bro? We're going over the most high God's dress code. Does God have a dress code? Yeah. He does, right? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Listen up. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the Bible says that the woman should not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Right? Read. Oh, I like I like how you went there, right? We do got that on. We're going to explain that too. Read. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So the prophet said that what we have on now is a woman's garment. You're a Levite. Is that a woman's garment or a priestly garment, brother? That's a priestly garment. That's not a woman's garment. Read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So let's, let's take it backwards now. What does a what does a woman wear that God commands a man not to wear? A dress. 
a dress, right? What about you? So what, is a, what is a woman wear that God commands not to wear? A dress. If you see a man with, that's your husband? If your husband comes home with a dress on, what are you going to do? That's not going to be right, right? You're going to look at him like he done lost his damn mind. He done went bugged down and crazy, right? What about you, bro? Would you wear a dress? Why not? I'm a man. Oh, you a what? <laughs> what? Say it again. Oh, You're a man, right? You ain't supposed to be wearing a dress. All praises. We got that mentality, right? Let me ask you now. Not today. 70 years ago. Let's go 70 years ago. If a woman wore pants, how would you look at that woman? 70 years ago now. 70 years ago. How was women looked at that wore pants? Sis, don't, hey, where you at, sis? Come back. What did what did they do? What, how did they view the sisters oh, she, that wore she, pants she, she 70 got, years ago? Levi, you're on Levi. <laughs> 70 years ago when a woman wore pants, what happened? Yeah. Basically, basically 70 years ago, they didn't wear pants. They, they didn't what? 70 years ago, they didn't wear pants, right? So, so where did that come? Actually, read about when women started wearing pants. Amelia Bloom and them. When they started wearing pants, they was ridiculed, chastised, laughed to scorn. The same way a man would be walking around with a dress today, but they're trying now to make you, what is it, what is it? Um, Numb your brains to seeing a man, normalize a man wearing a dress so that 30 years from now, guess what? It's going to be nothing for you to see a man wearing a dress. That's the same progression as women in pants. The same progression. When them women tried to wear pants back then, they was ridiculed. They was, they was chastised. They was laughed to scorn. To the point where it was normalized after a bunch of years. Let's see who pants was created for. Get that. And now, is, is there judgment for that? Exactly. You got the rappers now wearing pants. Is God going to judge our women for wearing pants or our men for wearing a dress? Is God going to deal with our people, punish them? Is he? Why would God punish them? Get that. Let's see what pants were created for them we're going to deal with. Exodus chapter 28, verse 42. Hey, bro, you need to take control of that. Read. And thou, and thou shalt make them linen breeches. It says thou shalt make them linen breeches. This is the creation of pants. And hey, find that in Sirach, where he says he had a robe with, with, with breeches on. Read. And thou shalt make them linen breeches. Thou shalt make linen breeches and do what? To cover their nakedness. To cover their nakedness, read. From the loins, even up to the thighs, they shall reach. Uh-huh. And they shall be upon Aaron. They shall be upon Aaron, which is a man, and who else? And upon his sons. And upon Aaron's sons. It didn't say his daughters. It didn't say his wife or their wives. It says Aaron and his sons. So that's who pants was created for. It's up for 9, 1, and 8. And I'm going to ask you a question. Man, would God be wrong for judging our women that wear pants? If Christ returned now and he says, if you wear pants, I'm going to put you to death. Would Christ be wrong for that? No, what about you, sis? Would Christ be wrong for our women wearing pants, for judging our women that wear pants? He said no. Why wouldn't he be? Yeah, why wouldn't, hey, how y'all doing today? Is Christ or the Most High God going to judge our women for wearing pants? Like condemn them, like put them, you know, judge them when the last day. Will you be able to make it into the kingdom? You should? Let me show you, let me ask you now. You said you should, that's a heavy thing. We were thinking about that a little bit today. You got a job, right? When you, when you on your job, let me ask you a question. When you on your job, right? A police officer has a uniform to wear, right? If that police officer comes into his workplace and says, you know what, boss, today I don't want to wear my uniform. I want to wear my casual clothes and go out to work. What's going to happen to him? He ain't going to work that day. He ain't going to work that day? If you work at Starbucks, Starbucks give you a uniform, right? If you go into Starbucks and say, hey, you know what, Mr. Manager, I don't want to wear my uniform today, but I still want to work. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Probably lose your job, right? So why would the Most High God be wrong for dealing with our people that don't want to dress the way he commands us to dress? Our job is to keep his commandments and to represent him. You are God's chosen people. So the, the so-called white man ain't wrong for kicking you out of his establishment for not agreeing to wear his uniform. But God has to accept our women dressed out of order and our men dressed out of order. Bring it up. Does that make sense? Does it make sense? Our people have to change our minds and understand that God is not the author of confusion. Work. Read that in Zephaniah 1, verse 8. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 8. Here's the judgment. 
feet. And it shall come to pass Go ahead. in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. Uh -huh. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice, when Christ comes back to judge this earth here for all the wickedness, for all the homosexuality, for all the whoremongering, for all the murder, for all the stealing, for every crime that's going on, it's, it's predominantly in our community. The wickedness of our people. Read. That I will punish the priests, uh, the princess, the, uh -huh. the princes, and the king's children. And the king's children, read. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. And all such that are clothed outside of the most high God's dress code. You understand that? But as men, brother, your job, if you understand that God is going to judge your household and the women in your household for wearing pants, what are you ordained to do, bro? What are you supposed to do in your household if your women are wearing pants? Knowing the judgment for that. And knowing that God feels, read that 22 verse 5 again. This is how God feels about our women wearing pants and our men wearing dresses. We're not trying to flip it because our men dress effeminate now. Work. Matter of fact, our men sagging their pants below their behind is against God. Work. That's in the Bible as well. When we read these scripts here, we think, our women think because we talk about pants, we're just judging them. No, our brothers that walk around with their behinds exposed, tight pants on, lewd behavior, they're going to be judged as well. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Go ahead. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read, pants. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. A dress or skirt, read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. The Most High like God says it's abominable to see how our people are dressed today. And how we carry ourselves today. How you doing today, bro? We're going over God's dress code today. And does God give us a dress code and how we're supposed to dress? How you doing today, sis? You gonna fly earlier? Yeah. Okay, all praises. So now what are you supposed to do, bro? With your wife. Your wife wearing a, a short suit, right? So now as a man of the Lord, you, what's your nationality? Yeah. Uh, you see what I mean? And that's why we put the cup before the horse then, right? But we were dealing with the Levi brother that knew he was an Israelite. What's your name, bro? Ray. Ray? I mean, one of those, we represent Israel united in Christ, right? What we're here to do is show our people, the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans, that you're not black, you're not Hispanic, you're not Jamaican, you're not Cuban, you're not Haitian, you're not uh, Peruvian, you're actually the children of the Most High God. You're the children of Israel. That's right. You understand that? But this is how we know they get Deuteronomy 28. What you got? Get Deuteronomy 28. This is what we're showing, right? So I'm gonna ask you again. What country do, are you? An African American? Where do you come from? Where did your father come from? You look like you got a little Benjamin in you. My mother's Benjamin. Oh, wholehearted. You look like you. You West Indian? No, you you African American. Yes, I'm African American, but on my. Mom's side. Uh huh. It was my great grandma was black. Okay. How you doing, bro? You just got a flyer. You going on? What's your nationality, bro? My dad's side. Dad's side. You just black, right? So guess what? I know. Guess what you are. That's all you know. That's all you need to know. Give me that in numbers, in numbers real quick. Numbers chapter one. Hold you the runner. You said on your dad's side you're just black, right? Let's see what side matters, because it's the most I deal with mixture. Like if your mama's white and your daddy's black, are you considered mixed according to God? No, what are you then? I'm black. You are who your daddy is, yeah. right? Yeah. Read that. Numbers, man, chapter man. one. Oh, so you got some understanding then. The man carry the seed. Right. You plant that seed into the soil, it's still going to come up with what that seed is. Right. Ain't going to be no different. You plant an apple seed in soil over in China, an apple tree is going to grow. You plant an apple seed in India, an apple tree is going to grow, right? Nothing different. The climate may be different, so it may take a little bit more time or less time to cultivate, right? But it's gonna still be an apple tree. Read that. Numbers chapter one, verse 18. Go ahead. And they assembled all the congregation together Go ahead. on the first day of the second month. Uh -huh. After they declared their pedigrees. Read it right, and they. And they declared their pedigrees. Go ahead. Of their fathers. Uh, by the, by right. the house of their fathers. So they declared their bloodline, their pedigree from the house of their fathers. So with Israel, you are who your father is, right? So what we're doing now is showing you, if your father's a, a so-called black man, we say so-called, why? Because you're not black. Right. You're actually from the, you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. You're a prince that has power with the Most High God. 
How you doing, bro? We're going over nationality today. What's your nationality, bro? Well, we want to show you something real quick. What's your nationality? American black. American black, right? What we're showing our people is that American black is not a nationality. It's a color in a crayon box, right? You got a young king right there with you. All of you brothers are supposed to be gods on this earth, meaning right. rulers on this earth here. But the first step is knowing who you are, coming back to your rightful heritage and nationality. That's what we're teaching today. Now get Deuteronomy 28, we're gonna show you something. How do we know that the so-called black man is actually an Israelite from the tribe of Judah? How do we know that we are brothers and sisters with the Mexicans and the Cubans? We all one people. And that we all are God's chosen people. How do we know that should be the question, right? So that you can no longer associate yourself with black or with African-American named after two so-called white men. America was named after Amerigo Vespucci, right? That Italian explorer that came here, conquered the people, settled the land, and he called the land after his name. Africa was called the land of Ham. That's Ham's children. Before Leo Scipio Africanus defeated Hannibal in the Second Punic Wars and named Africa after Leo Scipio Africanus. The land of Ham after Leo Scipio Africanus, right? Get in Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Go ahead. But it shall come to pass. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So we made a pact. The children of Israel, when we came out of Egypt, we made a covenant with the Most High God and said, all that you command us to do, we will do it. And the Most High God said, if you do it, we're going to set you on high above all nations. We delivered you from captivity in Egypt so that I can now set you in your place on high above all nations. But he said the stipulation was if we did not keep the commandments of God, he's going to put these curses on us. And give me sign and wonder. Real quick, what you got? What, what do you mean by we? We, meaning we are the children of Israel. The so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And I say we because that's our lineage, that's our forefathers that did those things. These, that's our heritage. That's our history. That's who we are. I'm just an old dumb country boy. Go ahead. Me too. Um, so what you're saying, if, I, if I'm understanding you. What the Bible saying? Go ahead. What the Bible says. Mm -hmm. These two are tribe. That's right. Those, those are the, the sons of Jacob. Those the only one up in the covenant? Who did the most I make a covenant with I'm coming out of that, Egypt? That, that, that's why I asked when you say we. Because right. I'm, I'm but who did he make a covenant with? Who was God's people? Who did he bring forth out of Egypt? Did he bring everyone out of Egypt? Did he? You said he brought Israel. Ham's people out of Egypt? No. Ham, I, I'm saying he brought the Israelites out of Egypt. Ham, 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 Ham is African. Ham are the Africans, right? He's saying, if I'm understanding you, uh -huh. he made a covenant with the Israelites. With the Israelites, right? That's what the Bible is saying. Right? Is he? Let's, let's get Deuteronomy chapter 1. Only, let's read it. Let's read it. Deuteronomy 1, verse 1. And then we're going to get Psalms 147. Deuteronomy, chapter... That's a great question. Because our people, our people have a complex on them now, right? For some reason, we, we can identify with this here. We know this happened to us, right? We, we can identify with being, filling up the, the prison houses. We can identify with the self-hatred and the ghettos and slums and the drug dealing, all the different things, the pandemics that are going on in our community. We can identify with that, the single-parent households. But then when it comes about the, the truth about the Bible is that you're actually greater than that and you were actually created to be the rulers. Our Stockholm Syndrome now kicks in and now all of a sudden, what about what about the same people that did this to us? What about the people that's whipping our backs? What about the people that actually show as much hatred to us that they'll grab my wife, take her, rape her, and give her back to me? What about them? Why can't they get salvation too? Do they think about that when they're doing all this stuff to us? Or when this government is set up to keep us oppressed and dumbed down thinking that we African-Americans? Do they think about us in their kingdom? But when we teach our people who we are, it's, what, what about the people that, that actually did this to us? Why can't we love them too? We don't hate them. The thing is, we're telling you, you're greater than just being a servant and a damn slave on this planet, black man. Right. You were created to rule this. So it doesn't matter about them. Let's get who the covenant was for. Read. Okay. One verse one. Deuteronomy chapter one, verse one. Who's Moses speaking to in the book of Deuteronomy? Read. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. These be the, mo the words which Moses spake unto who? All Israel. No, all nations. All Israel. To the white man. All Israel. To the Chinese man. All Israel. It's just the Israelites, bro. 
get Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 now. Hold on a second. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. Ask you again, bro. What's your nationality, bro? Israelite, bro. How you know? How do we get here in this country? I'm going to show you something real How quick. Let me get, get signed in one because we got thrown off a little bit by the brother's question. I want to prove to you without a shadow of the doubt that the Israelites are actually who you are and what we're saying, right? We don't want to get thrown off by the question. Then we'll get to your question because we were dealing with nationality and proving who we are first. Get signed and wonder. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. Go ahead. Look it up. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. These curses are going to be upon the Israelites for a sign. We know that's Washington Street. Why? The sign says Washington Street, right? So we know that the Israelites, the curse is going to be on them for a sign and what else? And for a wonder. And for a wonder and what else? And upon thy seed forever. It's going to be upon our people forever, right? So now, a sign that who are suffering the curse today. How did, how did we as people get over here in this country? Little bro, how did the black people get over here in this country? Lord. Help them out, Jack. Lord, tell them what you think. What happened? Was our people slaves? Yes, right? Our people were slaves, right? That happened, right? We were, when we brought over on slave ship, did this happen to our people? Right. Right, all that happened. Read that in 28, verse 68. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. This is Moses speaking to the children of Israel. And he's telling you these curses are going to be for a sign. Meaning you can identify who, the, who he's speaking to and for based off of who's suffering these curses here. Read that. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. He said the Most High God is going to bring you into Egypt again with what? With ships. How do we get over here in America? Ships. On slave ships, right? But what is Egypt talking about in Exodus chapter 20? Exodus chapter 20, verse, verse 1 and 2. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. Go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. The Most High God brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, read. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. So yeah, Egypt is synonymous with what? Bondage. But another word for bondage is what? Slavery. Slavery. He brought us out of the house of bondage. Now go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 68 again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. The Lord shall bring you into bondage bring you into slavery what again a second time with what with ships on cargo slave ships on cargo ships what people did that happen to what people went into slavery on slave ships any time in history that'll be a sign that they are actually the children of Israel who did that happen to who else did that happen to African Americans it happened to us right so on slave ships read on there's more to it by the way, whereof I speak unto thee. The same way Moses said it's going to happen to you, Israelites, read. Thou shalt see it no more again. You will not see your homeland ever again. Our homeland is actually Jerusalem. That's the motherland. It's on the same landmass as Africa. It used to be called the land of Canaan after the son of Ham, right? Ham was the forefather of the dark races, but not the Negroes. He was the forefather of the Africans. So the people on that land of Canaan, which is Jerusalem, Israel, they were black people too at first initially, right? And it's connected to Africa. Africa, that's your motherland. We don't have to get it, but read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. And there, in that land, after we get off those slave ships, what happened to us when we got off the slave ships? When the slaves got off the ships, what happened? Auction blocks. Auction blocks. We would be sold unto who? Unto your enemies. We would be sold unto our friends. Unto your enemies. Because what you understand is we lost, this happened to us because we lost a war. A war was going on against our enemies. <clears throat> the Nilotic Africans, they tell us in school that, well, you sold your own people into slavery. You gave your own people to the white man. No, the children of Ham, the Nilotic Africans, had tribal wars against the children of Shem, the Bantu Africans, so to speak, right? The Israelites, the Shemites. Africans, we lost the battle and we were sold to the white man for guns and wine and all those different things. Quick question. What you got? So you telling me, me and Africans are two different people. You're two different people. Get that in on Zonda Van. Quick question for you. <laughs> I, don't, I, mean, I don't keep in that. Because you said Shemites. Shemites, right. Which was African, right? No, the Shemites are the children of Shem. Right, you're going to get it real quick. But what is Jerusalem? in Northern Africa at one time? Exactly. The so Jerusalem how would that make us part of 
being African, but still Israelite. No, I'm, when I said African, meaning I was dealing with the land mass of Africa because Jerusalem is considered what now? The Middle East. Yeah, yeah, so when we deal with Israel, right? But that's a bunch of confusion. Right. right. It's not the Middle East. The Suez Canal was created, a man-made water water system created to divide, to to disconnect Jerusalem from Africa. Right. So we wasn't saying we're Africans. What we're saying is the land of Jerusalem is on that land mass of Africa. You understand? That is the motherland. Because we don't associate the motherland with Jerusalem anymore. We associate it with Africa. Not knowing that Jerusalem actually is on that same landmass, and it is the motherland. Right. Matter of fact, we skipped it, but we got to go to it. Okay. We got to go read that, that. Read that about Hamlet. That kind of broke it up because I know Jerusalem was north. I mean, northern Africa. It's northern, and it still is northern okay. Africa. Which right? they call Middle East. It, but now they call it the Middle East. Guess what? The land of Iraq. All that stuff was still. Some of that was part of the land of Canaan as well. But the, the so-called white man divided that stuff. Why do you think all that turmoil is going over there in that in that land? Why do you think all that fighting and wars? We didn't go to Iraq and Iran. All that stuff, that stuff is our land. And part of that stuff is the promised land. Syria, all that stuff. When you read the Bible, the most High gives the borders of what the landmass was. And it's divided by those rivers that's talked about in Genesis. Right. And that's more than just that little strip of land that we call Israel today. You understand that? Read that in the Zondervan real quick. The Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. The definition of Ham. The definition of Ham Reed. The youngest son of Noah. So Ham was one of the youngest sons of Noah Reed. Born probably about 96 years before the flood. Go ahead. And one of the eight persons to live through the flood. Right, so the question was, so we're not the same people as the Africans read. He became the progenitor of the dark races. He became the forefather of the dark races read. Not the Negroes. But not the Negroes, not the dark race Negroes though. He wasn't the forefather of the Negroes read. But the Egyptians, the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Ethiopians, Libyans, Libyans, and Canaanites, and Canaanites. That's the forefather. That's their forefather. But the Negroes, who are the Negroes' forefathers? Who was our forefathers? And if we're not African, who was our forefathers? Our forefathers is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through that line. We are the Earth. sons of Jacob. We are the children of Israel. Earth. That's who we are. We're not African. Understand and get back to let's get the motherland because we skipped that, but I we, we can't be skipping that stuff because it's important. It's important. I a what you got? I know I'm an Israelite. I don't know what tribe. You don't know what tribe? What what are you what do you associate yourself with on this side? You American black, West Indian, Levite. Which one are you? I identify as American. You identify yourself as American black. How you doing, bro? How you doing? We're going over nationality today and who we are. Actually, what's your nationality, bro? African American, right? We're showing our people that we're not American blacks, we're not African, we're not American, we're not African Americans, we're not Negroes, we're not colored, we're actually the children of Israel. The sons of the, the Most High God through the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's our forefather. You understand that? Get the motherland real quick. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. Go ahead. But Jerusalem. Which is ab which is above is free. So it says the landmass of Jerusalem, which is above, is free. Read. Which is the mother of us all. That's the mother of us all. The motherland is Jerusalem, and that is northeast Africa. It's not the Middle East. Like they like to confuse us and say, if you look at that map, the land of Israel is northeast Africa. You understand that? That is the mother of us all. And no, so-called white people does not. They're not the original inhabitants of that land. Right. That is the landmass first of the of the Canaanites, which were the dark-skinned people, and then the Most High gave it to His chosen people, Israel, because it was ordained for us from the beginning. From the beginning, that landmass was ours. You understand that? What is the nation? <laughs> Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models.
his word.